Quite some time ago, I made a video named Super Size Hobo Stove, and in that video, I took a strainer and turned it into a hobo stove, which I used in my backyard. I then followed it up with another video where I took the strainer and a stock pot that fit together and tried to turn them into a wood gasifier. Well, that didn't work out so well, but uh, I opened it up to my viewers to provide me some comments and suggestions on where I could take this project next. Well, I've gone through all of those comments. I've incorporated a good number of them into updates, and now I'm ready to give you Super Size Hobo Stove version 3. If you're interested in seeing if this works out, keep watching. So that first video, the Super Size Hobo Stove, involved using a pot strainer similar to this one. This one obviously is not the one I used in that video. You can see that it has never been fired up. It's also a bit smaller. And in that video, I asked for some suggestions and recommendations of what people might do. And there was a good number of them that were given me. Now, I created a smaller one for myself. I just haven't gotten around to testing this one. It looks a lot like a Ikea hobo stove and that was the concept is to create something just larger than a regular Ikea hobo stove and then I moved on to this and this is a pot set so it was the larger stock pot with the included strainer inside of it and uh, all I did to it at that time was to drill some holes around the outside and to give it some airflow hoping that there would be enough airflow coming in from the bottom that it would come up the sides of the inner pot and reintroduce itself into the mix and would combust giving me secondary combustion well of course I, I didn't have hold out a lot of hope for that because there was just too many holes in the inner pot so there is a, a, a prescriptive ratio of holes of inflow air and secondary air ports that have to be abided by if you want to get good secondary combustion. So I opened it up. What did people think I should do? Well, the number one comment was to seal off the air holes on the inside container. And I had a lot of suggestions on how to do that. And this is what I decided on. Basically, all I have here is aluminum duct or aluminum flashing that you would use around your eaves and places like that. Uh, now this one is black and white. It's not the, the clear or shiny aluminum, but it's exactly the same thing. It's just pre-painted. And what I decided to do was to occlude all the holes except for the very top ones right across here. And how I affixed it was simply to measure it, cut it, overlap it, pierce holes, and put some nuts and bolts through. Very, very simple. Now, I know the question is, will it get so hot as to melt this aluminum flashing? I'm not sure. I don't think so, because I think the stainless steel on the inside will conduct most of the heat away and prevent it from getting overly hot where the flashing is. However, that's part of what we're going to test today. So I left it at this height, which is approximately four and a half inches, with just one set of air holes. I can easily remove more metal from this if I decide I want to, but we're going to start with this. So intake air is all the holes on the bottom. Secondary jets are the holes around the outside at the top. This will fit inside of the stock pot, which has its original set of holes, so that there is a gap between the, the inner and outer pot where air will travel up, and a gap at the bottom where air can enter in the bottom holes and feed up through the bottom of the strainer. Now, the other suggestion that I received most often was can create some type of a focuser or condenser for the top of it. The easy answer was take a pot lid and put it on with a hole cut in it. Well, I had to go back to the thrift store to find a pot lid that would fit because when I bought this at the thrift store originally, it didn't have one. So that's probably the reason why it was taken out to the thrift store. So I did. I went out and I bought a pot lid that just happens to fit. Now it's a thin stainless steel which turned out to be a good thing because it made it relatively easy to cut. I thought it would be a lot more difficult, but it wasn't. Once I decided on the opening size, I drew a line with a marker around the outside, drilled a pilot hole, and just used a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, and it went around very easily. I did a reasonable job of smoothing off the edges so I don't cut myself, but if I decide to keep this, I may do a little bit better job of smoothing those off. All right, so what happens is place the wood inside, light it from the top, condenser goes on, and hopefully we'll see some real gasification take place. 
So let's get it outside and give it a try. All right, as with the other two videos, I am working in my backyard for the testing phase at least. So I just want to show you what I've done. I have preloaded the stove with some hardwood cutoffs that I have usually for testing small stoves out here in the backyard. But I'm just going to show you again the what I have done to modify this stove. So again, here is the pot. The modifications are made. Three quarter inch holes spaced around the outside. Here is the inner strainer. Now, here's what I want to show at this point. As I mentioned, I only left the top row of holes exposed, covered off the rest. Now, the entire bottom is open. But when you look at this, you have to understand that that top row of holes is way down here just because of the design of the strainer itself. So it, before any gasification can take place, or will take place, or at least secondary combustion, then the fuel load and the uh, smoldering, if you will, the gasification, will have to come down to that level. So I guess what that means is, if you're looking for a super clean burn, provided this does work out, uh, you're going to have to wait till your fuel load burns down to that point. Now that does not mean at all that you can't load this thing right to the top. It's just meaning that pure or full gasification won't occur until you get down to that point. So to get this started, just a Vaseline and makeup pad top. And I have some smaller stuff here that I'm going to throw on top. Just little pieces of wood from projects and tests and things like that. Hopefully that's going to be enough. It's Wood is dry. Very dry, in fact. I have a little piece of birch bark in the mix here. Let's see if I can get that lit. Throw that down in there as well. So once I get this loaded, I'll put the condenser focuser on top but it'll take a few minutes even before this top load really catches on and then moves down into the mix on oh, these pieces are a little bit big but no I think I'll wait to put those on let's see all right here comes the focuser so really, there is nothing to do now but wait a few minutes for that to really catch on. And when it does and it starts to move down to the level of those jets, then that's when I'll bring you back. All right, two things since I turned the video off. First off, if those astute viewers will recognize that I didn't put the strainer back in the stock pot before lighting it up and putting it on the fire bricks that I have. So I had to do that quickly before it really lit up. That only took a second. The other thing is, is the breeze has picked up. So I have put this windscreen up higher because it was really playing havoc with the flame. My initial observations are is this is what I call a lazy flame for lack of a better descriptor. Basically it just uh, seems to be rolling slowly which is something I think uh, I really quite like from this. It's not so incredibly hot and fast that it uh, goes through the fuel that quickly. Uh, it's very, very clean. Now I am going to take you down a closer look as I can get to the fire here. And hopefully it's showing up. Yes, there is secondary combustion working from that top row of jets. Not every jet is firing. As I look around, I'm going to say better than half of them are. The fuel could go down a tiny bit more, but yes, there is secondary, secondary combustion happening. And there is gasification, which of course would be required would be a prerequisite to secondary combustion. So what I'm seeing is some lazy smoke, is the best way to describe, down inside, which of course is what is lighting up. Now, it's not the best setup because I can see fuel well engaged in flame way down inside. That's not going to show from this angle. So overall, it's not as clean as a well-designed wood gas stove, but it's much improved over my last attempt to say the very least. I did mention when we were still in the house that there is a prescribed ratio between input air holes on the bottom of the stove and uh, secondary jets around the top. Now, 
I did measure this to see if it meets that recommendation. And that recommendation, by the way, is four to one. I found that in a few locations, four to one. So you want four times as much air coming in the bottom as you would have jets coming out from around the side. Actually, the secondary combustion is improving quite a bit. Another indication of gasification, if you look at the wood, hopefully you can see that, it is charring. It's charring rather than just glowing red with flame. And that charring is the heat which is causing the wood to give off the wood gas, which is then igniting with the secondary combustion coming out of the jets. It's a success. Is it the best I could have hoped for? Uh, maybe not, but it's still a much improved performance over what I had the last time. The focuser seems to be doing its job, kind of restricting the exit airflow just a tiny bit, causing the wood gas to condense a little bit inside uh, where it gets an opportunity to meet flame. I am going to move the camera around a little bit, see if we can get some better views. A little hard. What if I back up? I'll have to wait until I get into the editing phase, but I can see that secondary combustion happening three quarters of the way around the stove. And so this is even better than I could have hoped, but not as good as it possibly could be. All right, so what I have to do now is wait for the fuel to be fully consumed, burn out, before I can take a look at the insides to see if there was any damage to that aluminum flashing I used to cover up the holes. So it'll take me a little while to do that, but for you, it'll be in just a few moments. All right, the fire is out. Stove is cooled off. Let me readjust the camera. We'll take a closer look and see what impact the fire had on it. Okay, first off, the condenser focuser, quite sooty, not surprising at all. I have another observation to make on that in a moment. The inner chamber, the strainer, uh, first thing you'll notice is that the uh, paint burned off <laughs> the, the uh, flashing that I had on it was covered in black point. There are two points at which the metal did start to melt, actually did melt through. So, all right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Nice and clean on the inside. So one of the things I noticed as this was burning is that there was a little bit of black coming around the top of the focuser. And I think that may have been the paint burning off of this. The other option is the focuser was doing its job and keeping the wood gases inside of the combustion area to a certain degree. And they were cooling off on the inside here because of the breeze before I put the windscreen up around it. And that would have caused some of that blackening, of course. Okay, I'm going to call that a success. It wasn't perfect secondary combustion. It wasn't perfect wood gasification, but it was really quite impressive. The way that most of the air holes around the inner chamber were occluded caused the fire to slow down significantly. It was actually a really nice burning fire. One of those nice fires you like to sit and watch because the flames just seem to roll slowly and it was very clean. So yeah, it was a success. Well, almost. What I need to do now, as I mentioned, is find some other material that I can use to wrap around the outside of that chamber that is more heat resistant than the aluminum flashing was. I, I use that because, honestly, it's what I had. It, it's easy to work with, and I was just looking for proof of concept on that. Okay, uh, what should I do? Should I open this up for comments and suggestions? Why not? Let's go for it. If you have any comments or suggestions, either criti critiques or suggestions for improvements or another direction to go altogether, please put it in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.